Welcome back everybody. Today we will discuss the relation between music and identity. Identity is very much on our mind and it's no big surprise that music plays a big role when thinking about identity. Just think about the rebel punker, <coughs> the cool hip hopper or the distinguished visitor of the opera. The music they listen to, the way they dress, the way they talk and the friends they have, all these things tell a story about who they are. They tell a story about their identity. In this lesson, we will explore three topics. The relation between music and identity in general, the relation between music and personal identity, and lastly, the relation between music and collective identity. So let's start with music and identity in general. So what do we mean when we speak about identity? Who am I and who are you? Of course, these are difficult and perhaps even pompous questions. However, it is safe to say that who we are or our identity is not something that is completely fixed or completely determined. We recognize who our parents are, the place we are born, the school we went to, the friends we have and the choices we make in life. All these things contribute to our identity. They all contribute to who we were, who we are, and who we may become. We call this life story approach to identity, narrative identity. Our identities are like a narrative, a story containing multiple chapters and multiple storylines. And just as a narrative describes a process, this happens and then this happens and so on and so forth, our identities are also a process. At first we can't even tie our own shoelaces. After a couple of years we learn to read and write. There are certain things we like, such as maths or sports, and other things we dislike, such as doing homework or eating vegetables. Our identity is our story, a story that's not fixed and that is continuously in process. Or, in other words, our identity is, as the musicologist Simon Frith calls it, our self in process. What makes music so interesting and special is that it offers a way to experience this self in process, this self that is continuously in a state of becoming. But what do we mean by music as an experience of identity? It's tempting to think that we listen to music because it somehow affirms our identity or satisfies our desires. So for example, imagine a young woman who is a rebel by nature. She dislikes politics because politicians are liars who only act out of self-interest and she equally dislikes neoliberal economics with egoistic bankers who satisfy their greed at the expense of other people's needs. And because she has these ideas, punk music, which is provocative, is her music of choice. Punk music affirms her ideas and satisfies her desires. Sounds okay, doesn't it? Well, if we consider the idea of music as an experience of identity, it actually plays a more profound role. How? Well, this brings us to the second part of the lesson, namely music and personal identity. Let's go back to the first module, where we explored the omnipresence of music. Music is all around us, so when we are submerged in a musical landscape, music seems to do a lot more than only satisfy our musical desires or preferences. What happens is that music actually helps to shape our desires, preferences and ideas. So let's go back to the young lady who likes punk music. Imagine a younger version of this lady who is listening to this. The clip of the two women being buried alive, together with the music and the lyrics, fascinates her. She learns that this song is dedicated to all those who suffer from state terror. She agrees. She identifies with the way Pussy Riot, the punk group we just saw in the clip, addresses the problem of state terror. 
music in this case is not affirming her ideas because there were no ideas to affirm in the first place. Of course, this is kind of a simplification because everyone has ideas. But nevertheless, what music does, so to say, is shape ideas and desires, whether these ideas are there or not. Music is opening up possibilities for her to think in a certain way, to dress in a certain way, and to listen and play music in a certain way. In other words, music is one way to discover what identity is. It shapes the way our self is in process, and because music is all around us, the influence it has on the shaping of our identity is quite significant. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise when we look at music and identity from a broader perspective. And this leads us to the third part of the lesson, namely music and collective identity. <laughs> So, what to think of this example of music? Now, music for this tribe in Rwanda isn't something they choose after they have established their identity. Quite the contrary, it is part of their identity. Being a member of that community consists of playing that music, singing that music and dancing to that music. Their collective identity is partly made, constructed and experienced through their music. What I really like is that their guests dance along with them. Now, this doesn't only mean come and dance with us. It isn't only an invitation to dance. It is an invitation to be part of the collective. By inviting them to dance along, they are saying this is who we are and we want you to be part of that group. It is a form of hospitality. The guest stops being a guest and becomes one of them. At least, that is, I confess, my own not cynical interpretation. Music is thus a manifestation of collective identity. We are members of a certain group or community because music binds us together. Just think about the national anthem. We don't play the national anthem during the Olympics or World Cup to passively listen to it or to be entertained. The national anthem is the very way we identify with our country. It reinforces our feeling of kinship. We cheer for the sports player because we are all part of the same community. And this brings us to the end of this lecture. To summarize, identity is a process. We are always in a stage of becoming a person or community and music is a part of that process. Not only do we listen, dance, play music because it satisfies a need or desire we have. Music is actually one of the forces that shape the ideas, needs and desires we have. We listen to music because we are part of a group and we are part of a group because we listen to music. And with these two points we have come to the end of this lecture. Now I hope to see you soon. All the best! <laughs>